It's like, it say again. Say again. <laughs> say again? Yes. It's a surreal moment because I, I'm watching this film when I'm a child being filmed in my neighborhood, and then I'm here in Cannes uh, so many years later. 28. 28 yeah. years, yeah. So, and talking about how now I'm a producer and how I, it started to make me have a, want a career for Hollywood and because of Boys in the Hood, because of John Singleton, and, and I'm here with you, and you're telling me this about going to the Palais to, to watch the film and have the cocktail with the... I, I'm very overwhelmed right now. Tell me, Very tell us, how you you actually found this, found me. Oh, so I found you because um, I, as soon as John Singleton passed away, um, I was one of the, uh, the first people of all of my friends and, and um, associates in Hollywood who really was tracking the story about what was happening with him in the hospital. And I wanted to know more about what was going on. And I was I knew I was coming to Cannes. So I said, did Boys in the Hood, I think in my mind, producer maybe, Did Boys in the Hood ever go to Cannes? And I'm too young to know if it, if it did or if it didn't. Of course, in uncertain regard, it was here in 1991 in May in Cannes. And I thought, okay, now I start more research. Who is writing about who was with him? What crew, what team production? Because I come from production world. I started production. Ice Cube. With the Ice Cube was here for the concert, for the after party, doing um, a show. Um, and also the fact that you had also Rage in Harlem at the same time. Um, having parties for their screening here as well. Yeah. It's like a black film noir, so actually can launch the um, this type of films um, to be popular in America. Totally. And it's a big movement at that time, but it's because of Cannes. And so that's how I found you. You wrote the most amazing blog. I got more information. I had to find So you found blog. it on filmfestivals.com, right? Yep, filmfestivals.com. And I read the blog, and um, it was so fantastic and so fascinating to um, read about um, everything I didn't know about John Singleton's first time out of the country the hamburger and the silver bowl yeah his fascination with not having a burger and a wrapper because where we come from it's in a wrapper yeah so sort of, you just take it out and you eat it so um, you wrote me I wrote you and I inquired as to meeting with you here in Cannes to find out whatever else I can um, locate for information about um, the boys in the hood in Cannes and I'm just fascinated because I'm from this neighborhood Also. And then you offered the, the room for justice, which I was uh, <laughs> getting. I, I, I said, I'm leaving early from Cannes on Friday. She can, I, my room is paid for to Sunday. She can have my room, and I was completely honored to do so. And I mean, these things are, have been worked out, but I was more than uh, thrilled to make this accommodation because I mean, uh, she deserves the respect because of her father, and he's a very important person. And, the black community in America, but also in the in the world as a filmmaker. So you'll so. get your chance to meet uh, Justice and, I, uh, in the Palais okay, on the red is, carpet. This is the part where I'm just like, you surprise me with this and I'm just like, I'm trying so hard not to cry um, because I never in a million years think 28 years after, I, I'm actually in Montreal. My mom is from Montreal. Nice I'm in Montreal, and I'm with my first boyfriend, Philippe LaRose, in um, the summer of 1991, and I'm running in the rain from the subway in Montreal to go see Boys in the Hood. Oh, wow. And um, a very fantastic story about how I'm actually in Canada watching the premiere uh, that summer of Boys in the Hood, and um, my mother is going to be so proud of me. She knows how important this film was uh, for me to see it in Montreal as well, where her hometown, and I'm just... I'm just, it's, it's, a, it's a very, this, the film had a very big impact on my life and on my career. It's the reason why I chose to be working um, in the industry in Hollywood. So it's very um, overwhelming, emotional. Good. I and mean, that's good emotion. Yeah. Um, it shaped my, um, because these things I see in the movie, I, I saw those things growing up. And to see someone put this into the film was very inspiring to me that you know um, I can make it out of my environment and to make it something in my life to go to college to be the first person in my family to go to college to be the first person to get education as high as I went in my education this is very important and so the character of Trey really inspired me to do that but you know that it's about the same story happened to to John he was mm -hmm. in the I think he got a grant to mm -hmm. get to UCLA and uh, 
he met my boss. Uh, oh, it's USC. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He met Peter Guber, who That's was right. uh, the head, and he told the story and said, yeah, interesting. And uh, he suggested that John uh, went to see Stephanie Ellen, and she was then uh, launching what they call the. Uh, I hate the, the word, but that's what they called the ethnic uh, section. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were mm -hmm. doing. They they realized they had a big success with La Bamba, for Latino, that's right. and then Boys, and mm -hmm. then another one with uh, with uh, I like it like that. A few years mm -hmm. later, so and Stephanie took on and and produced the film, and I I have this very great memories of walking with. Uh, uh, Stephanie uh, late at night in in Cannes discussing the film and all of that mm -hmm. and suddenly slow I mean no one suddenly a car comes by slowly and I see her frightened she looks at the car and says, yeah you know where I come from uh, when mm -hmm. a car is driving slowly next to That's you right. you might be in trouble so she was hey come on it's this true. is Cannes that's not the <laughs> yeah it's true and you know um, I've seen many things like this in my neighborhood um, people um, a lot of when I grew up into the 80s and it's part of the 90s as well it's um, the drive-bys a lot of crack cocaine uh, the way that the crack cocaine is really ravaged the black community in the 1980s in, in America is very disturbing the the, the degradation of the black community and then the nation, the whole country, not just South Central LA, but all over the country, um, destroyed many families uh, over many years, even till now, because it was such a, just a slow, just tear down, breakdown of the black nuclear family in America. Um, and then we see because of the the crack disparity, cocaine disparity, we see more prison, higher incarceration. Um, of the fathers not being in the home, the mothers raising the children on single That's family. That's a message income. from Boys in the Hood, exactly. That's right. yeah. And so we see that in the film. Yeah. Um, we're able to see... Um, you know, Why do you think the film was uh, made such an impact on the world about with that message? What, what was... Mm -hmm. What made an echo? What? I think it was a very raw, um, unfiltered version of the reality of what happens every day. It wasn't like a sugar coated, you know, with like Hollywood. It was a very raw and true account of exactly true. what happens. Very true. And when people can connect with the truth, yeah. and it is a true story because it happens to so many people where I come from every day. Even now, it's the same for a lot of people, um, unfortunately, mm -hmm. because of the, um, the social ill of the drugs, the, the war on drugs, and also just the other elements that have ravaged you know, the black community. But the world has seen, now John Singleton was able to put that on the screen and say, this is what my neighborhood looks like, and this is what are the problems there, but this is what happens if you believe in yourself also to make it out of the situation. And also perhaps a message about education. I education, mean, if yeah. they, things go wrong because the, parent, the, the, the dad is in jail, the mother has another job and no time to raise, and mm -hmm. they... Or discipline, because the child then becomes, the child is raised by the gang, or the child is raised by, raised by the streets. Yeah. The, the drug lord is raising the kid now, and yeah. they, they say, oh, here's some $150 Michael Jordan tennis shoes, mm -hmm. I'm going to put you under my wing, but maybe within one year he's selling drugs for this guy. Yeah. He has dreams to become a basketball player, NBA star, but then... Maybe he gets caught up into that life, yeah. which is another story. Another another film can be, you know. Um, but a lot of the times, like the kids I grew up with that were really good in sports, the drug dealers will give them shoes and say, "Keep keep going. We want to push your career." So you go to the NBA. You represent for the, our, our our community, our neighborhood. You know. And sometimes some of the kids they get caught up into actually doing the drugs and they forget about their dreams. That's done. So that's the hard part. Yeah. It's like a 50-50 shot, right? Yeah. You don't know what's going to happen. You just have to believe in yourself because um, uh, it's very, the peer pressure is very, very strong. So I think um, what reunites us here is, well, the story that if you believe in your dreams, they can happen. And uh, the, the fairy tales do happen, and the fact that we meet is one of them. <laughs> it, it's a, they, they were talking to me about um, like um, can magic before yes, I came, and I think it. this is silly, this is like ridiculous. But I went to one other place in Cuba, and was in Cuba, in the country of Cuba, and it's like a magical place like can. It's very, the environment is very um, inclusive. Whatever you wish to 
put into the universe and can, I feel like it, it will, it's gonna somehow come back to you if you really, really believe the, that it can happen for you or that you can be a part of that world because this is the place that you can do those things. And everybody is more so, in, not like in America, here in Cannes, it's more like you can walk up to Leonardo DiCaprio or you can walk up to Quentin Tarantino or you can walk up to yeah. everybody because they're very relaxed here. And yeah, they're more yeah, so yeah. just like enjoying their film and they're enjoying the, the culture. And yeah. then they're more relaxed, so you can just have a conversation with them and have a few words and a drink or whatever. And a glass of champagne. Glass of champagne. Uh, Ariana, thank you so much. Uh, thank Twice. you to the cameraman, this guy I keep seeing in the in the window, in the in the mirror, which is disturbing. Get away, please. Get, get out of there. Get, get out of there. I'm not shooting you. <laughs> anyway, it was fun and thank you very much. Thank you, Bruno.